Internet, you're here at Nike Sportswear for the Nike Sportswear Hall of Fame. Today featuring Harry Carson, New York Giants, all-pro linebacker, Hall of Famer. We're going to sit and listen to Harry Carson speak about his life. He's going to talk about uh, his years with the Giants. And uh, maybe he'll tell us some interesting stories about himself, LT, Pepper Johnson, Brad Van Pelt, Bill Parcells, Leonard Marshall, that whole Giants team that was like just full of wild beasts. One of the great defenses ever. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, it's Nike Sportswear. Let's get it in. To introduce our third inductee and guest who also happens to be our first player with his own plaque at the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. <laughs> you had known growing up that it was possible for a black man to be president of the United States. How do you think that would have changed how your life turned out? Well, um, I, don't, I really don't think my life would have changed a whole lot. I, I feel like um, and I came up during the 60s, I was born in the 50s, and I, I think the thing that helped me in sports was, uh, in whatever I tried to do, always strive to be the best that I could be. And that's what I tried to be as an athlete. But even outside of sports, I always try to uh, empathize with people, put myself in their place, and care about my fellow man. I've never really considered myself a celebrity, I'm just like anybody else, I just had the good fortune and have had the opportunity to play uh, football. And so I've never really put myself, my, myself on, a, on a pedestal. Now, when I played, there was a time when I didn't think there would be a black head coach. And I didn't think that, um, you know, I, I looked at the options of being a coach before I left football. And because I didn't see the possibility there, I did not want to go into that profession of coaching for years and years and years and never getting an opportunity to uh, coach on the NFL level as a head coach. What was the locker room like, your first impressions of, of uh, an NFL locker room versus what you see today? How, how is it different? Well, my first impressions were, I remember, um, when I first came to the Giants, there were guys who were older. Let's say a Larry Zonka, Jack Gregory, John Mendenhall. Those guys were well-established uh, professional athletes, and you know they would go and have a beer after practice. And you know, coming out of college, you know that's you can't have beer. You know, you can't have alcohol, wine. The guys would come in after practice and they'd light up a cigarette. And I think I'm going to put that out before the coach walks in. But you know, if you're a professional athlete, you can do whatever you want to do as long as it did not deter the way that you played the game. And so I had to get adjusted to that. Uh, I was just a young player. I was impressionable, and um, you know, I had to adjust to it. There were guys on that team who were involved in all kinds of. Thanks. That's why we didn't win a whole lot of games. <laughs> Back in the 70s, you know, the, the team sucked and, and uh, you know, there were guys who partied all night and they drank and, you know, they did all kinds of stuff and, you know, I came from South Carolina and my goal was just to stick and stay and be there and, and be the best player that I could be. But, uh, you know, in terms of performance on the field, the Giants were awful. They were, they were not a very good team. I really didn't concern myself with those guys. and They did whatever they were going to do, but for me, I had to do what I was going to do, and that was, A, stay away from drugs and alcohol, because if I got involved, I knew I would like it. And uh, I, I probably, you know, I mean, you, you got to understand, as an athlete, and even as a person, you have to understand what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, and if you have weaknesses that you think uh, might pull you down, you got to stay away from it. And so that's the reason why I never got involved with drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, in terms of women, that was a different thing. <laughs> but, you know, I enjoyed my early years with, with the Giants. I had, I, you know, I found ways to enjoy myself. I enjoyed playing the game. I enjoyed being an athlete. And, and um, 
eventually I got to a point where I enjoyed the New York experience. You've experienced a culture of losing and a, and a culture of, of winning. What is the culture of losing like? In well, I think, I, I think when you lose, it's not so much a, a physical ability on the field. I, I think there's a mindset of losing. And I think it really is about attitude. And you have to change the mindset first. You have to change the attitude of players and, and make them believe that they can win. Um, if you don't have the attitude, then you're out there really beating the dead horse. And I, I think we got we went from uh, just being in games and just showing up to getting to a point where we thought we could win. And we then transitioned to a point where we knew we could win, but we had to put forth the effort. And then we got to a point where we knew we were going to win. And there's a big difference between just being out on the field and knowing that you're going to win. In 86, we knew we were going to win. It was a different mindset, different attitude. It was about checking your ego at the door and doing what's best for the team and physically beating people into submission uh, when, when, you're, when you took the field. I mean, you knew what your assignments were. You knew that you were going to have your teammates back and uh, your teammate was going to have your back and you were just going to go out and claw and do everything you had to do for one another.